We'll call to order the May regular uh, Minot City Council meeting. Roll call. Berg. Here. Franz Fogg. Here. Hedberg. Here. Janser. Here. Cozen. Here. Lehner. Here. Olson. Here. Panko. Here. Padragula. Here. Schuler. Shimento. Here. Sitma. Here. Straight. Here. With us. Barney. Here. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Item number three is the approval of the minutes from the April 3rd, 2017 Mr. Mayor, meeting. Alderman Franz Fogg. I'd move items three and four. Second. Seconded by Lehner. Any discussion? Approval of the minutes and the approval of the bills and transfers. Call the roll. Franz Fogg. Yes. Hedberg. Yes. Janser. <coughs> yes. Colson. Yes. Lehner. Yes. Olson. Yes. Panko. Yes. Padragula. Yes. Shimento. Yes. Sitma. Yes. Straight. Yes. Berg. Yes. Motion carries. Item number five is a public hearing. A public hearing to consider the request by Larry Schaefer, owner of, a, owner of an accessory building, to relocate the structure from 306 Maple Street to 3520 30th Street Northwest, also known as Southeast Southwest Less Portion Outlot 1, North 2 Southwest Less Highway, South 3 155 83. It's Public Works and Safety Committee item number 12. Is there anybody in the audience that cares to comment on this uh, public hearing? Mr. Schaefer, come forward, please. Your name and address for the record. Larry Schaefer, 1203 18th Avenue Northwest, why not? I'm just, I'm here to answer any questions that anybody has. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Schaefer? Thank you, sir. Anybody else in the audience care to comment on this public hearing? Anybody else care to comment? Need a motion? Alderman uh, Janser. Mr. Mayor, I move we close the public hearing and approve the item. Second. Second. Seconded by who? Uh, Panko. I tell you, I can't hear. Call the roll. Janser. Yes. Cozen. Yes. Lehner. Yes. Olson. Yes. Panko. Yes. Padragula. Yes. Shimento. Yes. Sitma. Yes. Straight. Yes. Berg. Yes. Franz Fogg. Yes. Hedberg. Yes. Motion carries. <laughs> Item number six is personal appearances. Mr. Rodman. Good evening, Mayor Barney and City Council. My name is Rick Rodman. I live at 433 21st Street Southwest. Been a resident of mine my whole life. I'm here to talk about the current levy system and the new levy system we're going to have. Sad to say our existing levy system in this town is very poor due to direct violations of the Corps of Engineers inspection checklist. I'm here to ask the City Council for a couple things. One, that the City Council enact a new ordinance making the Corps of Engineers levy inspection checklist the sole authority of the condition and inspection of the levy system. They are the experts, no one else. I'm also asking that the City Council put teeth in it by uh, putting a fine base on that. Why do we need that? I'm here to tell you that I've done a little bit of the inspecting of the levy and we have direct violations of the levy system by neglect and by owners and it can be very dangerous. I'll give you a little example. I thought Mayor Barney had come down to my area after the 2011 flood, but he didn't, and I was mistaken on that. But let me tell you what happened to our area before the big part of the flood. Uh, we have a really good levy system, what I thought down there. There are violations, and there were violations of it. And one violation caused that levy to blow. I mean, it sounded like a 1500 pound bomb going off. And I know what one of them sounds like. What caused it? A tree. The root system in the tree, which was allowed to grow within a three foot radius of the bottom of the levee. 
which is a direct violation of this. <clears throat> now, if it wasn't for the fact that the big part of the water inundated the valley and flooded us all, if that would not have happened and that levee blew and flooded all them homes down there, can you imagine the lawsuit? It would have been bad. And it's kind of funny, I was going to bring pictures of some of the violations that I have documented. However, the Mine at Daily did me a favor Sunday. There's one right in this picture right here. May I come up and show it to you? Come forward. And there again, the root system of the tree goes into the earth and the water follows that root system. And that is what caused our levee to blow. I know that because I just happened to be down at our house uh, the minute we could get back down there. I moved into the house. I stayed there. And uh, two days after we were allowed back down there, I noticed a Corps of Engineers vehicle. So, me being who I am, inquisitive, I went down there and there were two inspectors from the St. Paul District. They came down to see what caused that levee to blow. You didn't have to look very hard. The culprit was right there, standing there like a skeleton, with its roots all over the place that went right into that levee. The water followed it and blew it. And it can happen again if we allow it to. And that's why I'm asking the city council to do it, about uh, adding some teeth to it. Uh, thank you, Mr. Rodman. Before we get to questions, um, I'm thinking that perhaps the, uh, the quickest solution to this would be, I know where you live because I was your alderman for many years, <laughs> um, to have uh, Alderman Hedberg and Alderman Shimano meet with you and Mr. Jonason um, outside the course of this meeting and see what we can do to accommodate what your idea is with what uh, m maybe Mr. Jonathan has in mind and uh, then maybe have them report back at a subsequent meeting. I would like to mention I have talked to Mr. Jonas a number of times and he's been very receptive and he's a good guy. Okay. And I've talked to the, my city council members too. Okay. <laughs> so if the, the four of you can get together and then uh, maybe one of the aldermen can make a report back uh, and they'll let you know when that is going to be and then you can come back again. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Any questions for Mr. Rodman? Thank you. Anybody else that cares to uh, speak under personal appearances and that's for any item that is not on tonight's agenda? Yes, sir. like old home week for me it's old home week yeah all the perkins here yeah uh i'm steve hofford i live at 509 17th street southwest um <clears throat> i know we've done a lot of work uh since 2011 to make sure that what happened then doesn't happen again but uh, i have a few questions i've been watching periodically over the last five years the um the lever levels up at rafferty and the levels at um alameda now i look today um Alameda said that they're at 562 meters, which is full supply level. Um, Rafferty, they're at 550 and a half meters, which is FSL, and I'm assuming that means full supply level. Um, there's no release right now into the service below Rafferty. Uh, Lake Darling, we're at 1597.24 today, which is currently about 1,000 CFS at the Boy Scout Bridge. Um, I know a lot of things transpired that got us into a bad position in 2011 and I just feel that if they're at full supply level I mean are we doing our due diligence from this end and I know um, Ackerman has been working with um, the state at a state level to get funding and we've gotten some of that but you know if uh, we don't watch it from our end we're gonna hear from Jim Olson three days beforehand that it's time to move out and um, I guess that's all I've really got to say. Um, like, I think it was Ryan that said, Ackerman, that if this, it's not a matter of if this happens again, it's a matter of when. And if when is soon, I want to make sure it's after we've 
done everything that we're trying to do with the city walls and and, and the flood dam. Okay. Any questions, Mr. Hofer? Any questions? Thank you, sir. Okay. Mr. Ackerman, did you have a comment? Yes, Mr. Mayor. My name is Ryan Ackerman. Uh, in capacity this evening, uh, Service Server Joint Board Administrator. Uh, just by way of uh, to confirm what the gentleman was saying, Alameda is currently sitting at 561.8 meters. Their full supply level is 562 meters. However, uh, the Canadians, they, they want those reservoirs to fill. They're, they're, what, what they call full supply level is the top of their pool. Okay, What we paid for is, is above that. The top of dam level at Alameda is uh, 567 meters. So there's 17 feet of empty storage right now sitting in Alameda <coughs> Reservoir. Uh, likewise in Rafferty, um, full supply level is 550.5. That's where they're at today. Top of dam there is 554 meters. So there's about 11 and a half feet of empty storage sitting in Rafferty right now. So the reservoirs are at where they're supposed to be at this time of year in accordance with the international agreement. It is, but it is something that we do watch very, very closely. It, it's, it gets a little bit confusing because the term full supply level includes the word full. Mm -hmm. So that it, it tends to confuse, uh, confuse people. So um, rest assured, we're keeping our eye on it, but there is plenty of storage available in those reservoirs. Any questions for Mr. Ackerman? Thank you, sir. Anybody else who cares to bring something forward that's not on tonight's agenda? Seeing no one, uh, Mayor's report, I have a very brief report for you this evening. Uh, on April 8th, I represented the city at the uh, military ball uh, in conjunction with our neighbors to the north in Canada and also Maynard Air Force Base. Uh, on April 12th, I was deposed in the Trinity versus uh, Manor Care lawsuit. Um, April 15th through the 21st, I was on vacation. Uh, April 25th, we had our pension board meeting, uh, and there's some items from that meeting that are on tonight's agenda. Uh, we met with Erling Dahl on economic, economic development matters on April 25th, and uh, Erling represents Friendly Consult, a Norwegian company that uh, we work with on uh, economic development. And on April 28th, I represented the city at the Native American powwow held on campus at Minot State University and I had to dance. It was quite a scene. Um, and lastly, I have with me tonight uh, Karina Verbitsky, who is a student at South Prairie High School, and she is job shadowing me today, and I made her come to the meeting um, because the first part of the day was so interesting. <laughs> right? Sorry. Yeah, it was great, she says. You lying? But anyways, that concludes my report. Uh, Mr. Barry, the city manager report, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of the council. <clears throat> it's my pleasure to give you the uh, May city manager's report. We'll start first with a few dates. Um, won't go through all of these dates, just get a couple highlights here. The Chamber of Commerce uh, has a citywide cleanup May 5th and 6th, that's this weekend, as well as the city's household hazardous waste collection will occur at the same time. I uh, wanted to also point out the council budget workshops, the first workshop on May 16th at 4.30 in the auditorium, the second to be held a week later on May 23rd, same place, same time. Uh, also, Build a Better World Community Fair. This is going to happen in our auditorium at 10 a.m. on June 3rd. Uh, of course, the June City Council meeting is on June 5th at 6.30. And uh, the City Council orientation will be held on June 22nd between 4 and 6.30. Uh, we've talked internally briefly about this, about uh, holding a council orientation to get uh, existing and, and more importantly new members who might potentially join the City Council up to speed on the city's uh, activities and operations and those sorts of things. So it would be open to all council members, but certainly we'd, we'd definitely like to see any potential new council members attend. All right, up next I uh, want to talk a bit about the budget calendar. <clears throat> Just a couple highlights here as well. I, I distributed the calendar to you this morning via email, so you should have that all in your inboxes. 
Uh, but on June 19th, I'll begin meeting with the department heads to uh, go through their budget requests. And, and uh, on August 7th, we'll present to you uh, the budget. Um, August 29th, the Committee of the Whole will meet for the uh, infamous Q&A meeting. And then uh, September 11th will be the first reading, we hope, and September 18th will be the second reading. The budget workshops I just mentioned, uh, I wanted to inform you, we have five sections associated with this um, uh, information sharing workshop. Those sections are to uh, include budget background, uh, our current city financial position, a section on revenues, where we get our revenues, what we call it a revenue 101, uh, and same thing for expense side of things, expense 101, and then finally, uh, getting into uh, the city budget. Uh, what goes into developing the city budget, what are the things we look for, what are our priorities, those sorts of things. Now, I do want to stress that the budget workshops are not intended to be the time and place to develop the budget together. That is absolutely not what these workshops are about. These are instead just information sharing workshops uh, with staff providing answers to questions that you might have about our revenues, expenses, and financial position and those types of things. All right. That will be open to uh, current and future uh, council members as well as the public and community. Uh, one thing, moving on, just wanted to mention, you'll notice that uh, that last week's committee meetings and then of course this week's agenda, you'll notice some updates to the memo template as well as our agendas. Uh, we have incorporated the use of some automation, uh, some software that helps us put together the uh, council agendas and uh, the committee agendas and board, board meeting agendas. And we've also updated the memos themselves so that we have clear and specific information that is consistent through every memo so that city council members, the public, or whoever know exactly where to go to and to get whatever kind of information they want. So no more of this sort of where's this information or is that going to be included or whatnot. We're trying to really streamline and create some consistency in the way that we interact with the elected officials. Um, next, I just wanted to mention that um, we have some in communication improvements that we've made. Uh, you'll begin to see a monthly newsletter. This is something I've talked about for a few months. It's taken us a little bit of time to get organized and, uh, and pull this together. But uh, the monthly newsletter is in um, uh, draft form right now. We expect to publish that on May 4th. Uh, that'll be distributed uh, every Thursday following council meetings. So that way, in case anything exciting happens at council, we can include that in the disbursement of uh, information as well. Right now, we do not have the funding to distribute this uh, in paper form. That is, uh, that means that we will only be able to distribute this electronically. So if you are interested in the, uh, the uh, community monthly newsletter, the city monthly newsletter, you'll have to sign up um, if you're not already signed up, giving us your email address, and then we'll push that out to you electronically. Um, it's my hope that eventually, and, and we'll see what this budget looks like for the next year, that at a minimum we might be able to find some funding to put together at least a, a printing, a small printing and a small publication budget for this and maybe distribute them through uh, direct mail uh, vehicles that we already use. For example, the bill inserts. Uh, that way we wouldn't have to pay extra postage. We wouldn't have to pay for envelopes and those sorts of things, just the printing and the, uh, and the paper. Uh, also, there will be a monthly NDR, National Disaster Resiliency Program update. Uh, that's been distributed to you uh, tonight. So you can see we are trying to present more information about what we're doing on the NDR program. Uh, and this information will be, is intended to go out monthly for consumption. Next, we want to talk about a few important updates. Uh, we have the budget workshop I've mentioned. We have the election on June 13th. Uh, council orientation has been scheduled for June 22nd. Uh, and then, of course, the council will meet the following week. There's a couple of meetings scheduled over that time period. It'll be really busy uh, for the staff and for uh, you know, elected officials during that time. Um, the council orientation, we're going to cover some things like basic city governance, uh, common policies and procedures, city council roles and responsibilities, give you also some information about departments, uh, those types of things. For, for the existing council members, this was probably not going to be much of any kind of new information. But if you're a recently elected uh, council member, you might find it to be beneficial too. Um, I'm not going to go into detail about the legislative session. Uh, we have our special counsel here with us tonight, Shane Gettle. He's going to go into a much thorough, more thorough um, analysis of this legislative uh, session um, under, under new business. 
Uh, but I did want to touch base really quickly on the flood control update, in particular House Bill 1020, because that was a landmark bill that uh, provided the city of Minot um, $193 million of state funding for uh, the uh, phases one, two, three, and four of our flood control project. So we're very, very excited about that. That money, in addition to the existing state funding of $20 million that was uh, sort of set aside for us, uh, provides a total state funding amount of $213 million. Uh, that fulfills the state's 65% cost share for the first four phases of flood control. And as you know, that removes 62% or so of our community from harm's way uh, in the floodplain. So that's pretty exciting. Now, we're going to have to come up with the uh, local share. We've been, we, we're all aware of that. The sales tax ad hoc committee has been working on that. That will reconvene here shortly. Uh, but essentially, we're going to need to come up with about $112 million of that local share going forward. I wanted to just publicly recognize a few folks uh, who've worked tirelessly on this. I sent the email to you, but in public I just wanted to thank and recognize a number of folks who've made this possible, particularly the passage of House Bill 1020. Uh, certainly Representative Roscoe Striley and Representative Jim Schmidt worked, har Schmidt worked very hard on this uh, together and, uh, and deserve uh, the majority of the credit. Uh, this was a creative and collaborative approach that they took to uh, secure funding for Minot and to work that, pro that through the process uh, ultimately to, to completion. Also, Senators Kresbaugh and Hogue uh, and our other area legislators, uh, Mayor Chuck Varney, of course, uh, went down to the legislature and testified in strong support for House Bill 1020. The State Water Commission, the Source River Joint Board, uh, Dan Jonason has been absolutely instrumental uh, behind the scenes, um, along with some other city staff. Ryan Ackerman, again, another instrumental uh, component or a player in all of this. And then uh, finally, Shane Gettle, and of course, I'd like to thank the entire state legislature for uh, keeping my mind in the forefront of, uh, of this important work. Uh, so what does that mean going forward? So on flood control, phases one through four now that we have the funding, at least the state's share. Uh, we're continuing with buyouts, and of course, the water treatment plant is uh, just about finishing up with that uh, hazard mitigation project. Uh, phases one, two, and three have been uh, scheduled to begin later this year. Uh, because they're already designed and we just need to essentially bid them out and, and begin that work. Phase four will begin its design uh, shortly. It's about 18 to maybe 24 month period to design those projects or to design phase four of that project. I'll briefly go through a couple department highlights. Um, first of all, let's start in public works. Uh, if you haven't noticed, the street sweepers are out. It's kind of nice. We're excited about that, especially if you ride a motorcycle like I do. Um, household hazardous waste, uh, we already touched based on that. Uh, automation, uh, we're on track for automation, so uh, we do expect that the carts will be delivered uh, July 8th or the week of July 8th. Uh, some interesting work on the puppy dog sewer project. About um, uh, phase six is underway, and about 25% of the city's sewage runs through this project, so it's a very important improvement project for us. And then, of course, several water main replacement projects are uh, continuing uh, throughout the city. On the engineering and construction uh, update side, uh, Broadway Bridge is uh, proceeding very nicely. Uh, the overnight work that was done in April was done smoothly, uh, which was nice. Downtown infrastructure, street improvement projects are, um, are underway. We have about five blocks that are under construction, and I want to remind everyone that our downtown is alive, it's open, and, and ready for your, for, uh, your dollars. Um, 83 bypass construction began April 24th. Uh, this involves the construction of two new bridges, uh, so it's going to be big work. Uh, Burdick Expressway was recently awarded to Keller Paving, and uh, that work will begin in late May. The 16th and Street and 31st Avenue intersection, that work has begun. It'll take about a month and a half for completion. And then uh, I've already touched based on the water treatment plant project. Okay, so let's talk about uh, something a little more sobering, uh, the parking structures. <clears throat> this is, um, got a couple updates for you here. It's been interesting work. Uh, we have conducted a preliminary financial review, and we've discovered a few things. Uh, first of all, the uh, city had, and of course, you're talking to two new folks here. You got you got the new public, or excuse me, the new finance director and the new city manager. So, forgive us. We're just kind of trying to get up to speed on all of this. Um, but essentially, as as we study this and talk with others and, and read the documentation, uh, the city had a not to exceed payment on each of those structures of about 4.9 million dollars. Those have been exceeded by the dollars you see here, uh, by $1.2 million for Renaissance and $2 million for Central. Some of that was related to, um, you know, work that was required in order to complete the structures. Um, 
There's also unpaid rent to date of about $128,500 per structure that was due in October of 2016, which puts total rent due at least today of over $250,000. And uh, there is some question about the management fees in regards to the operation of each of those parking structures that we're trying to look into. Uh, that's, that's a bit troubling for both myself and the finance director. Uh, additionally, from an operational standpoint, the cleanliness of the buildings has been of concern. Uh, particularly when you're given uh, given large management fees or they're taking large management fees to oversee those buildings. Uh, so when you see cleanliness and other sorts of things not being taken care of, that's a concern. Uh, of course, gate operation, uh, there have been some concerns about that which continue to this date. Uh, so we're still, look, still looking into those things. I have a meeting uh, with the developer on May 22nd. Steve Larson and Dominic will be in town. I plan to go through this information with them and express our uh, continued concern about all of these issues. Uh, you may know or recall that last month I talked with you about the fact that I uh, met with uh, uh, Cypress and we talked about uh, each of the construction on each of those particular sites. Uh, we were promised that the central roof, the central ramp roof design uh, was going to be submitted in March. It was. That's great news. Unfortunately, it didn't meet uh, the criteria. Uh, the design was submitted for only 20% of the building, not the entire building, so we rejected that because it's not in conformance with the building requirements. Uh, also, on the final design of the Renaissance development, that was due. This is the apartment complexes that were going to go above Renaissance. Those were due on April 21st. Uh, <clears throat> we did receive a uh, design for the apartment complexes. Uh, however, it was a draft, and it was not in final design uh, frame, so we we, uh, the developer essentially was not in compliance with that requirement. Getting closer, but not quite there. Uh, so as I, as I mentioned, we're meeting internally. I think we have two meetings this week and then a, maybe a meeting next week to talk about next steps uh, in closing out the parking ramps and then also to con convey our concerns uh, to the developer about the, the progress or lack thereof on those projects. Uh, the EFIS construction uh, is still incomplete. There's a punch list of several items that remain. Some alley work has to be also uh, undertaken. Uh, Contractor is currently a bit late on the completion of the work, and uh, there has been some question in regard to the quality of the workmanship. So we're working through those issues. I can assure you that the city is not going to accept any unfinished work. Um, now onto something maybe more fun and exciting: the airport. Uh, I am very pleased to announce that the airport and the staff at the airport have passed the annual FAA. FAA uh, certification inspection. This is, uh, you know, it's always tense when you get inspected, but uh, the team really has done a nice job out there and, uh, and has done uh, excellent work in getting this certification. Uh, and now they're having to go through the TSA inspection, which is a little bit uh, more lengthy, looks at other things. Uh, we expect that to continue throughout the month of May. Uh, there's also going to be a terminal warranty walkthrough on May 10th. This is the 11 month uh, terminal warranty inspection. And then there are going to be uh, some beautification projects going on uh, with some tree planting and some landscaping uh, planned for <coughs> May 19th. On the fire department side, you may recall that uh, uh, Station 5, uh, and that's actually in your something you'll likely talk about tonight because it went through the Planning Commission last week. Station 5 uh, location uh, was a bit contentious there for a little while. We had a few people from the community in and around the proposed location of Station 5, which is on 4th Avenue, close to the 83 bypass, uh, get concerned about that uh, facility. So we slowed the project down and uh, prevented it from going to the uh, Planning Commission too soon. Uh, the fire chief and I decided it would make sense to instead meet with the community and work through the issues at, at that local level. Uh, and uh, the fire chief did an excellent job pulling together presentation, her team. Uh, and uh, representing the uh, interests and dispelling some of the mis misconceptions about the fire station. I appreciate those of you who attended as well. Uh, I think it was well received and, and it was a great example of a good public process to help uh, both sides understand one another. That went through the Planning Commission last week and is uh, for your, uh, something of your consideration tonight. Uh, we had over 50 folks or so attend that meeting, which was great. Uh, and overall, I think the meeting was very successful uh, for both staff and the community. Uh, the Minot Library, we don't talk about the library very much, but I will tell you, and I'm proud to say this, that the library is actually one of the reasons I'm here. Uh, boy, if we didn't have this library, I don't know that, you know, 
Uh, Minot would have ranked as high for, for me as a place to, uh, to you know, essentially want to uh, relocate my family. I have four young kids, and we're always at the library, so I can tell you firsthand that the library is a, is a wonderful community asset, at least for myself and my family. Uh, but we don't talk about it a whole lot at City Council, so I'm delighted to present to you the annual report. Our library director, uh, Jenna Anderson, is here as well to answer any questions you might have about this. But I just want to point out a couple really cool and interesting things. Uh, first of all, cardholders grew slightly at uh, the end of 2016. Uh, the teen program attendance also increased over 2015. And although the library computer use, uh, terminal use, is, has fallen somewhat, uh, Wi-Fi use has increased. Now here's, some, here's a really interesting statistic, and that is um, essentially what the dollar amount converted from investment to um, in-service is. The library spends about $1.5 million to provide $12.6 million in services, which means that essentially for every dollar spent, that's about $8.87 in services that are provided. An absolutely phenomenal investment, or return on investment, I should say. Um, so I, I have just been amazed at all the different activities and all the different types of uh, opportunities that the library provides in our community. I just want to thank uh, our library director and the staff of the library uh, for all their good work that they do each and every day. Um, I won't go through all of this, but this is the National Disaster, uh, Disaster Resilience Program update. I uh, just want to let you know a couple, couple highlights here. The consulting contract was rebid. Uh, the, uh, there were two bids that were received that's closed as of last Friday. Two firms submitted, and the staff are currently going to evaluate that, um, those two um, consulting contracts and make a selection. We did have the program manager, top candidate, visit with us uh, last week, April 24th and 25th. Uh, he was very impressed, and um, we're waiting to hear from him in regard to uh, his decision to join our team as the program manager for the program. Buyouts and acquisitions are continuing. The downtown gathering space is continuing. Just maybe a slight uh, update on that. The Trinity Board is going to be meeting at their retreat, their annual retreat, later this week. And this is a topic of discussion for them. So we're hopeful that they favorably consider this uh, property, as we talked about last week, uh, and allow us to move forward uh, together in partnership with them. Uh, affordable housing, uh, as you may know, we're going to be issuing an RFP. Uh, in uh, about July time to solicit affordable housing projects. Uh, the same is going to happen with the family homeless shelter about maybe a month later to solicit uh, proposals for a family homeless shelter. And then uh, the decision support tool, uh, that demonstration for that, pro for that uh, particular software package was uh, held on April 13th. And there are some revisions being made to that um, going forward, but it uh, seems that we're hopeful that can be a useful tool for us. Uh, lastly, I just want to update you. I've uh, finally had an opportunity to really spend some time with our Air Force um, uh, community members. Uh, attended the military ball with the mayor. Uh, fortunately, you know, he was talking about dancing earlier. We did not have to dance together, so that was kind of <laughs> was good. Uh, I've got an honorary commander. I would have led. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, uh, I have an honorary commander now, which is exciting, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Shane Thrower. He's a commander of the seven, uh, 741st uh, Missile Squadron. Um, I also attended a full day tour of the Air Force Base and, and want to thank the, the team at the Air Force Base for that uh, thorough education. Uh, the takeaways that I had essentially are, are many. We have an impressive, an impressive facility up there. The people, the equipment, the capabilities of that team are just absolutely second to none. I uh, was just totally blown away. Um, they also have a very strong love for Minot. Um, and there's, they, they have a very sh strong relationship, and I think we do as well, with the Air Force Base, um, which is pretty unique, as I understand. Uh, they would like to see more partnering with the city. Uh, they'd like to have uh, us consider sharing the use of some of their facilities and programs, and they'd like to work with us on ways to be able to do that. Um, they'd like to see some more city amenities for younger airmen and younger women, air women. Uh, and then finally, um, this uh, sort of cross-sharing of information and, and improved knowledge uh, and uh, cross-training with regard to drills and other sorts of things, emergency management, emergency response, those types of things are something also that came up in our conversations. Um, so that, that was a very exciting tour, one of the highlights of uh, the last few months for me, and I'm very grateful to, um, uh, to the staff and, uh, and everyone who made that possible. So anyway, I'll stop there and ask if you have any questions for me. Any questions for Mr. Berry? 
Uh, Mr. Strait. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Tom, I, I'm going to start by saying that I thought the Station 5 public meeting was probably one of the best open meetings the city has ever run mm -hmm. that I've been a part of, at least in the last couple of years. And so I really appreciated that. I would like to see that for all of the NDR pieces, and I'd like to see it sooner rather than later. I recognize the city's got to go through vetting process, but I just had a meeting with three mothers this week that wanted to talk about the gathering space, and I, I think the sooner we can have that out in the open and talk about various blocks, uh, that would be great. Um, I guess I'd one thought, can the, can the newsletter be sent via Derek and the alert system that we currently have? Ooh, I'll demonstrate, uh, I don't know. <clears throat> Derek, do you happen to know? I'll demonstrate, yes, it can. It could be sent via Notify Me on Civic Plus. Perfect. And Derek, I know you're extremely busy, and it seems like increasingly getting busier, but is there a way that we can sync city meetings via our city website with, like, county commission meeting is tomorrow, park board will be at the end of the month, school district is here in a way where we can kind of be the clearinghouse. I know this is something that we all talk about because one way or another we periodically miss meetings, but is there a way to, in, in your busy schedule, can you just add that to the list of things to maybe address? <laughs> uh, actually, um, Alderman Pankow has brought this up before, and I have our uh, IT looking into some kind of uh, module or format that we can use uh, so I don't have to be sitting at my computer entering dates all day long for all the various agencies throughout the community. It's something that, that we're looking into and we, we want to create a solution for that sooner rather than later. Perfect. Thank you, sir. And any, any other questions? Oh, can I just Alderman make one? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for the continuation. I guess, uh, Tom, the Minot Air Force Base, ways that we can link and do more is, I think, essential. At the Park Board meeting last month, the parks are going to institute a uh, greens fee discount during the week, which I think is one small benefit that we can give the airmen. More things like that I think would be a benefit. And two others, can you tell me in your previous public works position, did your community have no trespassing signs all throughout the areas? I don't know if you had a waterway, but. We've acquired a lot of property, clearly, and we have a lot of no trespassing signs. And people ask me all the time, do we have to have all those no trespass trespassing signs? I'm just curious. It seems like the parks don't have them. The county doesn't have them. Do we have to have them? Well, um, Alderman Strait, Mr. Mayor Alderman Strait, um, yes, in some properties we do have to have them because the properties are not safe. Uh, a, lo a lot of the properties that we acquired in the buyouts, and I'm guessing that's what you're referring to, <clears throat> Those properties uh, were demoed, but uh, foundations and other sorts of things, unsafe, um, like, like for example, gas lines and other crimped lines and those sorts of things have not really been gone through to ensure site safety. And so the city instead has put up no trespass trespassing signs on those sites to keep people away from them, most, mostly as a safety um, deterrent than, it, than anything else. Uh, certainly, uh, we want to make as many of our, our, our open spaces or public lands accessible to as many folks as we can. Um, but in some instances where the sites aren't safe, the staff has uh, put up uh, no trespassing signs to keep the public out. Okay. And the, one final one. Yep. The, you entered into this job, and we have as well, many of us. And a long time ago, your former, uh, the person who held your job, and the city purchased the Walder Street home that it, I'm happy to say is the residents of our fantastic VISTA volunteers. Mm. The understanding at the time was this might be the entrance to the Greenway, and it never gets talked about. I asked Director Jonathan and Mr. Meyer this past week, like, are there plans? Clearly we have some funding issues, but can you look in and give us a response of, is there a long-term plan for that house in phase one of flood protection? Because um, as much as I love providing the housing for the VISTA volunteers, I'd like to see what the long-term plan is. Mm -hmm. We acquired that property, and I think we should have a, a plan just going forward. Perhaps you can bring that to us at the next council meeting. That'd be my pleasure. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Anything else? Thank you. All right. Anybody else? Any questions? Any questions? Alderman Padragula? Yeah, just a question slash comment. I guess, uh, first of all, I really appreciate your efforts to try to get it 
a handle on this uh, parking ramp situation. We also wanted to thank the mayor for his assertiveness. Um, I had the misfortune of wandering around them last Tuesday, and one of the things that bothered me was there were a lot of safety issues. I opened several doors, and there were totally dark spaces. I was frightened. I wish mm -hmm. I had a flashlight with me. Um, so I think when you talk about securing them, that really is an issue. And I've had several constituents mention that to me. They don't feel safe. Um, the second issue with that uh, it was Tuesday. Uh, water was gushing from both ceilings onto the onto the floor. I mean, there, I think there's structural, I don't know structural, but there certainly is is an issue uh, with the water from the roof. Um, the third issue I noticed was that, I, and I counted this, I, I went through level by level, only 18% of the spaces that day were being used. And I don't know if that's representative of typical usage, partly. <laughs> um, and I was wondering if you had any thoughts or if anything can be done to try to imp increase the usage so the developer and, and the city get more money in return and citizens have more places to park. I was really struck by that. That, uh, Mr. Mayor and Alderman Padragula, that issue about underutilization or potential underutilization of the parking garages has come up several times, particularly, particularly with the Downtown Business Association. And I think one of the things uh, that's the most obvious is the fact that it's a paid facility. And so if your nature is that you don't want to pay for parking, you're probably not going to go to that particular facility. Um, it's uh, whether you, depending upon what your view is, the fact that we don't have on-street paid parking uh, sort of lends itself to people to try to circle around the, the lot as many times or the streets as many times as they can until they find a, a free space than to go in and, and pay the dollar fifty or two dollars or whatever it is to to park in the in the parking facility. So you have somewhat of an uh, unfair competitive advantage with street parking uh, compared with the, those particular facilities. Um, but, you know, there are other reasons, I think, you know, some have explained to me that uh, there's a stigma that comes with those parking ramps, that people just, you know, kind of stay away from them. You know, I don't know if that's true or not. But, uh, you know, there are, and, and the fact that they don't necessarily look finished, I think, also lends people who may not otherwise know that they're open for business, uh, particularly when you talk about the gates being stuck closed or the gates being stuck open. Uh, I think there's just some concerns about whether or not you know what's the status or the uh, of those particular facilities now these are all issues that we're going to continue to be discussing with the developer uh, certainly this is um, very frustrating for many in our community and now has become my frustrating issue as well so we'll be working through this uh, I can assure you over the next several months uh, unfortunately uh, we, we don't appear to have as much leveraging uh, as much leverage as I'd like to I'd like to have in this particular situation, so we're looking at a number of different things that we might be able to do otherwise. I appreciate your answer and your candor. Thank you. You bet. Anything else? Thank you, Mr. Barry. Thank you. Uh, City Attorney. Mr. Mayor and members of the Council, I submitted a written report. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for the City Attorney on her report? None. Okay. Item number nine is consider the report of the Planning Commission. Do I have a motion? I'll move it. Moved by Cosen. Second. Second. Seconded by Janser. <coughs> Discussion? Is that uh, consent, I assume, Mr. Cosen? Yes. Discussion? For those of you in the audience, all three of these items will be passed as they came out of committee. Seeing no one, call the roll. Cosen? Yes. Lehner? Yes. Olson? Yes. Panko? Yes. Padragula? Yes. Shimento? Yes. Sitma? Yes. Strait? Yes. Berg? Yes. Fransfog? Yes. Hedberg? Yes. Janser? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, item number 10 is consider the report of the Finance and Improvements Committee. Alderman Fransfog? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We had 13 items. 12 of those items were actionable. I would move consent agenda on all 12 items. Second. Seconded by Hedberg. Discussion? For those of you in the audience, all of these items will be passed as they came out of committee. Unless you indicate otherwise, letting me know which item you'd like pulled for discussion. Discussion? Call the roll. Franz Fogg? Yes. Hedberg? Yes. Janser? Yes. Cosen? Yes. Lehner? Yes. Olson? Yes. Panko? Yes. Padrugula? Yes. Shimento? Yes. Sitma? Yes. Strait? Yes. Berg? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That completes my report. Thank you. Item number 11 is consider the report of the Public Works and Safety Committee. Um, Alderman Schuler is absent, so Alderman Pankow, I believe you have the, was it Pankow? Janser. Janser, I'm sorry. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You look so much like <clears throat> you wouldn't like me. No. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Mayor, we had 14 items on our agenda. Um, item 10 um, was a, a bid, the results of which I believe are on everyone's desk. Uh, and um, item 12 was previously taken care of in the public hearing. I would pull item 13 uh, for an update from staff and move consent on the remaining items. Second. Seconded by Sitmo. Uh, again, this means all of these items will be passed as it came out of committee except for item 12, which we passed earlier in the evening, and item 13, which has been pulled for further discussion. Is there anybody in the audience who would care to have any of these other items pulled for consideration? Seeing no one, Alderman, are you? Can I, Mr. Mayor, can, like I, something pulled? can you pull 14 for me just one last time? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, sorry. Thanks. Uh, <clears throat> item 14 has also been pulled, so we're voting on items <clears throat> 1 through 11, I believe, correct? Right? Okay. Call the roll. Janser? Yes. Kosin? Yes. Lehner? Yes. Olson? Yes. Panko? Yes. Pajagula? Yes. Shimento? Yes. Sitma? Yes. Strait? Yes. Berg? Yes. Fransfog? Yes. Hedberg? Yes. Motion carries. Alderman uh, Janser? Mr. Mayor, uh, item 13 um, was uh, a, a bid on a um, the sundry raw, raw water line, and um, I think uh, Dan Jonasson, our public works director, is going to update us on a uh, move on that. I think we should have a motion on the floor for discussion. So move, Mr. Mr. Mayor. Mayor. Alderman Janser, do you want to move something? Um, I would move that we reject these bids and rebid the project. Is there a second? I second. Patrick Gula seconds the motion. Thank you. Mr. Jonathan. Mr. Mayor, <clears throat> members of the council, um, this item actually pertains to two different projects. The first part of it is the Sundry Pipeline reroute. Uh, that low bidder was Wagner Construction. Uh, we still stand with, uh, we recommend that that bid be award and authorize the mayor to sign the documents. The second part of this is the Sundry Reservoir and Pump Station, which is 4195.1. That project uh, has had some discussion. There was an addendum sent out on this project the night before the bids were opened. That addendum covered uh, there was well work that was supposed to be done on our well D. Uh, we found out the afternoon before the bids were open that that well casing wasn't a 16 inch casing, it was a 14 inch casing. It had been relined. So the equipment that was supposed to go in there would not work. So since we didn't have time to go through and respect the, uh, re -spec the equipment, the engineer sent out an addendum notifying the bidders uh, that those items would not be included in the bid uh, if they included numbers in there. This has created a lot of, I guess, confusion amongst the bidders. Um, so on this project, the reservoir and pump station, staff is recommending that those bids be rejected and we rebid the project. but approval for the sundry pipeline project go forward okay but then perhaps some, uh, what we should be doing then is splitting the items at least initially um mr jancer would you like to withdraw your motion to uh to i will is the second to split the item sure okay uh, mr jancer i i would offer a substitute motion that um we take the course of action that uh public works director outlined with um approval of the of the first part uh, and then uh, reject the bids on the other one. I'll okay. second. Seconded by Padragula. Further, Ms. Hendershot, you seem excited. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, just for clarification, would that, would the motion include rebidding 4195.1? Yes, indeed. Yep. Further discussion? Alderman Padragula? Just a question for the attorney formally. Um, after the last meeting of the committee, we I briefly asked you if you foresaw any problems, uh, and it, it seems like Mr. Janser's motion of rejecting and rebidding, uh, from our point of view, makes sense. Legally, does that make sense to you, ma'am? 
Mr. Mayor and Alderman, Alderman Patrick Bula, the city can always reject all bids, and that's always an option for the city council, and it does make sense. Because okay. I was afraid one person was threatening to sue us, and the other probably would have sued us if we went the other way. So, okay, thank you. Further discussion? Further discussion? Anybody in the audience? Call the roll. Janser? Yes. Colson? Yes. Lehner? Yes. Olson? Yes. Panko? Yes. Padragula? Yes. Shimento? Yes. Sitma? Yes. Strait? Yes. Berg? Yes. Franz Fogg? Yes. Hedberg? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, item number 14. Item number 14, Mr. Mayor, I'd uh, move the committee recommendation. Second. Seconded by Hedberg. Discussion? <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> Alderman Strait. Mr. Mayor, thank you. Uh, I'm not going to waste anyone's time other than I. Again, one final time, I just don't believe that by straightening this road, we're making it more safe for the schools, the parks, the elementary uh, schools, parks, what am I missing? The residents of Eastwood Park. And uh, I, I fear that I'm going to be long dead, but that this is going to come back and haunt the neighborhood by encroaching to the north. So, okay, Thank you. Further discussion? Further discussion? Call the roll. Janser? Yes. Posen? Yes. Laner? Yes. Olson? Yes. Panko? Yes. Padragula? Yes. Shimento? Yes. Sitma? Yes. Strait? No. Berg? Yes. Bransfog? Yes. Hedberg? Yes. Motion passes. Alderman Mayor, that concludes my report. Thank you, Alderman Janser. Item number 12 is considered the report of the Airport Committee. Alderman Olson? Mr. Mayor, we had three actionable items on our agenda. I would move approval on all three. Second. Seconded by Laner. Again, for those of you in the audience, all three of these items will be. Uh, passed as they came out of committee. Uh, discussion? Discussion? Call the roll. Olson? Yes. Panko? Yes. Padragula? Yes. Shimento? Yes. Sitma? Yes. Strait? Yes. Berg? Yes. Fransfog? Yes. Hedberg? Yes. Janser? Yes. Colson? Yes. Laner? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That concludes my report. Thank you, Alderman Olson. Item number 13 is consider the report of the Liquor Gambling Control Committee. Alderman Hadberg. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We had two items on our agenda. I would move consent on both of those items. Second. Second. Seconded by Janser. Discussion? 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 Call the roll. Hedberg? Yes. Janser? Yes. Colson? Yes. Laner? Yes. Olson? Yes. Panko? Yes. Padragula? Yes. Shimento? Yes. Sitma? Yes. Strait? Yes. Berg? Yes. Fransfog? Yes. Motion carries. That concludes my report. Thank you, Alderman Haberg. Item number 14 is consider the report of the pension board. I serve as chairman of the pension board, so we had five items uh, that are actionable that came out of that meeting, and I entertain a motion. I'll move the five items, Mr. Mayor. Moved Second. by Laner, seconded by who? Fransfog. Fransfog. I tell you, I can't hear. Um, any discussion on those items? Alderman Padragula. Question. Um, I wasn't able to complete attending the entire meeting, and it was just I left. I had to leave for an appointment at the time you started questioning the uh, investment people, and I was very impressed by the uh, focus of the questions you asked. And the, the part I remember was that they're um, estimating a 7.5% return on investment. And historically, I think it's been something like 5.6% for a five-year average. And I believe you were starting to ask about whether it makes sense to have that as an investment goal if we've not reached it very often, if at all. Um, I also note that uh, in, in terms of some private retirement plans I have knowledge about, um, you know, they're, they're saying, you know, count on 3 or 4% return. Um, so I, I guess I'm a little concerned about that. I mean, on the other side of it is we don't want to have a very large unfunded liability, but it, which is, I think, common in municipalities throughout the country. On the other hand, it, I don't know how much sense it makes to have an overly optimistic estimate of returns. So I just wanted to hear from you what, how the investment people responded and what you with your managerial and business uh, background make of that. Uh, thank you, Alderman Padragula. The, uh, the discussion, uh, we, we spent some time discussing the, the goals of, uh, and I think we all came to the same conclusion that that 7.5 percent is ambitious. Um, and I think that the, um, we discussed uh, that perhaps the city needs to revise the budget 
from where it was before to uh, something a little more realistic. Can we get down to five and a half or six percent? Probably not initially, but it's something that we need to be monitoring on a yearly basis, understanding that those those returns are based over a five-year average. So um, to answer your question, yes, we did have a, I don't want to say spirited because it wasn't, but a, a, an in-depth discussion about uh, the goals and what we've been doing lately with our investment. Um, to that same end, item number five there uh, is approve the asset allocation letters, and that was something they asked me to sign, but I didn't feel comfortable signing it on my own, and that's why it's before all of you to uh, to also add your input to the the asset allocation. So um, I appreciate that and spreading that out amongst the, the knowledge amongst the, the aldermen. So um, nobody up here wants a higher unfunded liability, um, and uh, that is something that we are going to have to be looking at very uh, closely in the upcoming years and budget years as we, as we manage that and we transition to the new plan more and more. Yes, following up on that, it, that, that helps me understand. Um, I have no problem with the asset allocation. I think that's why we hire these people and pay them $160,000 a year. Um, I, I don't know, maybe somebody, maybe Mr. Pankow has the investment expertise, somebody does. Um, I have no problem with that. What I do have the issue with is, again, seemingly unrealistic goal. And I understand it's going to take a while to adjust that. But I guess I'd like to go on record and have us, maybe as a body, um, you know, have that uh, actively looked at and reconsidered. So next year when this comes around, um, you know, we can be more realistic. I found it ironic, too, that in their report, which I have a copy of here, they were forecasting, they were predicting significantly lower rates of return. So even they're saying that what they're estimating is, is probably not going to happen. So I, I, th I think there'd be value in being more consistent on that. And I'm comfortable with approving these five items as long as it's understood that, you know, it's something we're going to be actively looking at mm -hmm. and probably having to readjust next year. I would agree with you. Thank you. Further discussion? Further discussion? Call the roll. Lehner? Yes. Olson? Yes. Panko? Yes. Pajagula? Yes. Shimento? Yes. Sitma? Yes. Strait? Yes. Berg? Yes. Franzfog? Yes. Hedberg? Yes. Janser? Yes. Kosen? Yes. Uh, motion carries. Item number 15 is other business, and I know that we have uh, Mr. Gettle in the audience. Or I guess we have item number one would be the approval of the 2018 budget schedule. Move it. Moved it by who? Hedberg. Seconded by okay. Berg. Uh, Hedberg and Berg. Um, discussion? Any discussion? Yes. Alderman Padragula? Um, I want to just make a quick comment on that. I'm impressed with the schedule and wanted to compliment the city manager and the other people involved in uh, putting it together. And I wanted to be kind of the lone voice here, like Alderman Strait was a little earlier on his pet issue of the, of the uh, Oxbow. Um, one thing I notice and, and want to uh, speak to, I feel I need to speak to, is this issue of uh, giving us adequate time to have the city council president, uh, their message looked at. Uh, historically, uh, we've had the budget meeting and the president has presented and at the same time read. And it's the first time we've seen uh, their budget suggestions, which I want to take seriously. Uh, and this has been a cause of personal consternation for all nine years I've served on the council. This year I see it's different. This year I see we'll have an informational meeting and then the council president will be asked to present their message and will be given a week to look at it carefully and give it the study it deserves. I'm very, very pleased with it and I can't let that go by. Um, that's been one of the most frustrating things I've had in my service on the council. B budgets are critical and, you know, I want to give adequate respect to the president of the council and their thoughts and I think this will allow all of us to uh, look at that issue more carefully and take his or her uh, input uh, more seriously. So I really, really appreciate that. That's really a big deal for me, like it, like the uh, uh, verdict thing is for Mr. Strait. So I like that. Thank you. Thank you. Further discussion? Call the roll. Hedberg? Yes. Janser? Yes. Kosen? Yes. Lehner? Yes. Olson? Yes. Panko? Yes. Padragula? Yes. Shimento? Yes. Sitma? Yes. Straight? Yes. Berg? Yes. Franzfog? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, Mr. Gettle. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and 
City Council members. I also want to introduce uh, my associate and colleague here, Lacey Anderson, who will be joining me in uh, doing a dual presentation this evening. Okay. Uh, you authorized her to work for you as well uh, at my request because I needed a little more eyes and ears on the ground. And so she was instrumental in helping, and I want to give her an opportunity to uh, present as well. Uh, it's a pleasure working for you at the session. Uh, and uh, some things work slowly there, and other things happen rather swiftly. And it just depends on the pace of the legislation. But uh, I want to call upon uh, Lacey here to stand with me at the podium. And uh, we'll start with uh, slide one, which is just a basic overview of the, of the session. <coughs> Um, so this was a difficult session, as I think many of you know. The revenue was $1.4 billion below what it was forecasted in 2015. Uh, we did end up passing out a $13.6 billion budget, two-year budget, which includes uh, $4.3 billion in state general fund spending, and that's down uh, $1.7 million from last session. Uh, we were able to balance the budget. They were able to balance the budget with um, no tax increases, but they did have unprecedented budget cuts this last session. Higher ed was cut by 30%. Um, and then the state also took on county social services, which will uh, relieve local taxpayers of that burden and eliminates up to 20 mills of levy authority from each county. One of the big bills that dominated for Minot during the session was the uh, House Bill 1020, which was the Water Commission budget. That includes uh, $299 uh, million that are categorized into buckets uh, 120 million into water supply. That's where NAS funding will come from. Uh, 27 million for rural water. 136 million for flood control, and that's where the next biennium's uh, mon money for the Mouse River Enhanced Flood Protection Project will come from, and then 15.7 uh, million for general water. In the end, the State Water Commission was given the authority to transfer funds uh, through these buckets if one of them needs more money, as long as that also goes through the legislative budget section. The bill specifically includes $193 million, as you heard, of state funding for the Mouse River Enhanced Flood Protection Project. Uh, and that's, that's a limit that pertains to within the city limits of Minot. So outside the city limits, that number, uh, there, there's no constraint on it. Uh, this is for the eight-year period of July 1, 2017 through June 30, 2025. And as uh, Tom stated, uh, that funds phases one through four in terms of the state's cost share. Uh, this went through lots of different versions before we finally got to, to this, this result and uh, took a lot of work. There's also a line of credit in here, and this is important for NAS funding. For, for example, if it becomes late in the biennium and one of those buckets is low, uh, there is authority to go to the Bank of North Dakota and obtain a line of credit. And that's a, that's a tool so that, uh, that if uh, the litigation gets cleared and the project can move forward, there's a capacity to be able to do that. Uh, the other thing I want to mention, um, I, I did provide uh, the mayor and city staff with a laundry list of other bills that impact the city. We're not going to go through all those tonight. But one of them I was happy not to put on there was House Bill 1374. And that's one that would have impacted the way in which uh, Minot's applications for flood control would have been impacted. Uh, Tom came down and actually testified on that bill. And then over a weekend we got the language changed. I actually took it upon myself to draft the language. We ran it by Dan and Ryan, uh, Dan Jonathan and, and Ryan Ackerman over the weekend, got it to the committee on Monday and they adopted it and, and it specifically grandfathered out Minot. And that allows you to have the state cost share help fund up to the historic level. This legislation would have, would have required a lot deeper analysis and maybe, at the way it was originally written, required uh, the, the local share to co completely cover everything up to the historic level over and above what the core would have evaluated as a, as an econ on their economic analysis. So that's an example of legislation where we're also there to try to make sure that no harm is done. Uh, moving on, Senate Bill 2013 was where the oil and gas impact grant funding was located. That was in the land board budget. Uh, Minot needed an extension of an appropriation to fund their land, your landfill expansion. And this bill provides up to $1.3 million, which was appropriated for that project during the next biennium. And uh, Representative Striley was really integral in, in working with us on uh, getting that through. Also in that bill is the hub city funding. and. Those, uh, that funding that came through and that was based on the estimates that you see up there, uh, 925,000 barrels uh, per day is assumed for 2018. 
It jumps up to 950000 for 2019, and they're estimating about $47 per barrel, which is the North Dakota price on that. And that's how they came up with uh, the numbers that Shane's going to walk through. The next slide here is a very simplified version of the extraction tax and gross production tax, both currently uh, sitting, sitting at 5% and how the money flows through. This is really a dumbed down chart. There's a lot, it's a lot more complicated than this in real life, but I put this together just to, to illustrate exactly where Minot's Hub City funding is coming from. And you'll see that it comes in the red there on the gross production tax side of the ledger distribution. The gross production tax is then broken down into what's called a one-fifth side and a four-fifth side. So one percent of that five percent, or, um, or one quarter, or one-fifth, I guess, of that five percent is going down uh, through here, and, and, and there's a formula funding there. It's 375,000 per percent of mining employment. I'm going into depth in that in just the subsequent slide here. The other is the four-fifth side where um, um, the city of Minot is also participating along with Williston and Dickinson. So let's get into these in just a little more detail to give you the projections. First on the one-fifth side, this formula was changed. Um, leadership, particularly in the House, uh, thought that since every other agency in government was taking a cut, that Hub City should take a cut too, and they did. They took a pretty deep cut this session. So the formula now is 375000 per 1% of mining employment over 2%. Minot is currently at 6% for its mining employment. So you qualify as a hub city. You also have to have a population of 12,500 people, which you usually meet. So Minot's at 6% for the current mining. However, and here's where some of the cuts come in, Minot is deemed to be at 4% for fiscal year 2017 and 2018. Williston and Dickinson were also deemed to be lower for the first fiscal year of the biennium. And so everybody took a hit here. So it's 375,000 times two, because we're not funding the first 2% um, at, uh, at 750,000 for the first part of the, of the biennium. However, as of July 1st, 2018, mine will again be adjusted. If mine is actual then remains at 6%, depending upon employment and, and the ratio of mining to other employment in the economy, then, uh, then the assumption would be you'd, you wouldn't fund the first 2%, you'd fund the next four at 375,000 times four for 1.5 million for the second part of the fiscal year. So that's a total of 2.25 million then for the biennium out of that portion of the formula. Now we also want to take that and, and uh, add it to what will be coming through on the four-fifth side. And the four-fifth side, it's important to remember the assumptions that Lacey pointed to on the barrels per day and the price per barrel. And if those hold uh, constant throughout the biennium as forecasted, then this is the number that's generated for Minot, 3.67 million for a total of 5.9 million for the, for the biennium. That is substantially less than Minot received in previous two biennium. Uh, as I mentioned, Williston and Dickinson are down substantially too. And in fact, Dickinson ended up having to fund uh, the bailout of Dickinson State of $4.5 million out of some of the money it would have received as a hub city. So uh, everybody took a little bit of a hit there. However, these were made permanent. Uh, doesn't mean it can't be changed, but there's no sunset on, on, the, on the formula the way it's crafted right now, and there has been in the past. Another part of uh, this bill sets forth a study to look at how the hub cities are... Um, are funded going forward. This will likely get picked during the interim by one of the um, by legislative management. Uh, this study would look at the current and historical gas tax revenue allocations to hub cities, other state funding that's provided to hub cities, the local taxing and revenue levels in those hub cities compared to cities that are non-oil producing counties. Um, it would also look at the appropriate level for uh, allocations and based on infrastructure needs. And then also the fiscal impact if they were to transition hub cities out of that definition or to discontinue that altogether. So as you can see during the interim, we may well be busy um, with the other hub cities uh, providing a lot of information and data to one of the interim committees that this might be assigned to. Other legislation we want to draw to your attention, and as I mentioned, I've provided a, a more comprehensive list uh, in a spreadsheet, but uh, 2166 affects the way 
uh, property incentives can be granted at the at the at the city level. The city, if the if the city is considering a property incentive for longer than a five-year period of time, so this would affect Renaissance Zone and tax increment financing, then there are new rules. The city shall notice the terms to the county and school districts affected, who shall then have 30 days to indicate whether they will participate in that incentive or not. And if there's no response from them in that 30, 30 days, they're deemed to participate, but it also opens the door and allows them to negotiate the terms. And so that's new and it's something you'll have to consider if you're looking at new blocks to put in the Renaissance Zone or reapproving it for extending it or if you're doing any tax or increment financing. Um, finally, uh, Senate Bill 2288 reforms how um, cities do their, or municipalities do their budgeting. Um, it, it generally is affecting the deadlines on there, it, but it will not go into effect until after tax year 2017. Just puts in some of the basic requirements that you see up there on the screen. So that, that, those are the highlights of the session that we wanted to uh, provide you with tonight. Like I said, we've left a, a spreadsheet. Um, obviously, if any of those bills are of concern to you, please read them. Uh, and we'd be happy to address any questions. And I do want to credit uh, particularly Dan uh, Jonathan and uh, Ryan Ackerman for the great work. It was great to work with both of them during the session on some really complex legislation. Thank you, Mr. Ghetto. I have a question if you're ready. Yes. What's the schedule of the interim study? So the legislative leadership just was just picked and uh, Senator Holmberg from Grand Forks is again the chair of legislative management. He will be picking the committees. Uh, they have a lot of flexibility in terms of how those are picked. This particular study requires proportional representation from across the state. That was one of the things that was put into the bill. And uh, they'll be selecting those committees and assigning uh, the topics that they decide to study in June. They meet May 31st. They may meet May 31st. And so we'll have some more information uh, after that meeting. If you'd pass that on to us, I'd be grateful. Yeah, absolutely. In addition to that, I want to direct the city manager to send that spreadsheet from Mr. Gettle to the rest of the council um, for, for their reading pleasure. Sure. Not. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions for Mr. Gettle? Any questions? Thank you for your help down there. Uh, it was. Uh, it was good to have somebody down there uh, representing us because it's, uh, you know, part-time uh, government, uh, legislators, it's difficult to get down there uh, as often as, as, as needed. And uh, we appreciate all the hard work that, that you and Lacey put in on our behalf. So uh, thank you for that. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Uh, we're in line for an adjournment. So moved. Moved by Blainer, was it? Yep. Is there anybody second? Seconded by Hedberg. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed?